Hi, my name is Brandon Graisley. I'm a high school math teacher, and today we're going to look at how to rearrange a linear equation to get this form, the slope y-intercept form. Whenever it's written like this, with an x term with a coefficient in front, that coefficient is the slope, and this constant value, whatever this number is at the end here, that is the y-intercept, the place where that line crosses the y-axis. So we're going to do a few examples. Let's try y plus 7 equals x. Here we have, we're almost there, we have y, but we have this extra plus 7 on the left hand side, we don't really want that, and then we have an x over here which is great. We want to get rid of this plus 7, it's added to this side, so we're going to subtract it to get rid of it, but we have to do that, of course, to both sides. Anything you do in an equation, you need to perform the same operation on both sides. So y plus 7 is the original thing, and x, that's what, we're, that's what we started with. We're going to subtract 7 from each side of that equation. When we do that, this stuff here is going to zero out. It's, it's plus 7 minus 7. That, when you do that subtraction, you get 0. So we're left with just y on this side, and over here we have x minus 7. So we're finished now. We have our slope y-intercept form. The slope here is 1, and the y-intercept here is negative 7. And so with that information you could graph that line. Alright, let's do another one. How about 3x plus y minus 9 equals 0. Well, once again, we have our plus y that we want, but we have some other stuff with it. So we need to get rid of this 3x, and we need to get rid of this minus 9. And we're going to do that by doing the opposite operation to both sides of the equation. So 3x plus y minus 9 is our original equation. Let's subtract 3x, and we'll do that from both sides of the equation. So there's the new thing on both sides. We've subtracted 3x. Because we did the same thing to both sides, the equation is still valid and still balanced. We see that we have a 3x and a minus 3x. Those are going to cancel out, or the subtraction will be 0. That's why we're doing this. And we're left with, on this side, y minus 9 equals, over here, negative 3x. While we're getting close, we almost have y by itself. Now, this is very much like what we did up here, here we had a plus 7, now we've got a minus 9 to get rid of. Well, to get rid of that, we are going to add 9 to both sides of our equation. There's a plus 9, and there's a plus 9. Because I've done it to both sides, the equation is still valid. This is 0, so I'm left with y equals negative 3x plus 9. My slope here is negative 3, and my y-intercept is positive 9. All right, let's do a couple more. How about we try, uh, let's see, I had one written down here. I can't find it. There it is. This is a good one. 3 quarters squared plus x over 4 minus 5y over 8 equals 0. Now that looks a lot more complicated, uh, but that's just because it has some fractions in it, and it also has an exponent, which uh, we haven't done a lot of yet today. So you may be familiar with the uh, phrase, or the word, acronym, bed mass, or maybe you use PEMDAS. In both of these cases, um, you look at brackets or parentheses first, and then exponents. So those are the things that you um, resolve first, so that you compute first or calculate. Here we have some brackets, but inside of those brackets, 
uh, we just have a value. This is not a longer expression with operations in it. It's just a single number. So this is actually complete. The only reason we have brackets here is to show where the squaring applies. This is 3 quarters squared. It's not just 3 squared, for example, which if I wrote 3 quarters uh, squared, you might be confused about whether the whole thing is squared or just 3. So the brackets make that clear. So what we mean here is 3 quarters times 3 quarters. Sorry. 3 quarters times 3 quarters. Let me write the rest of this out. Plus x over 4 minus 5y over 8 equals 0. 3 quarters times 3 quarters. Multiply the tops. Multiply the bottoms. That's 9 sixteenths. Plus x over 4 minus 5y over 8 equals 0. Well, we are trying to get y by itself. It has a negative 5 eighths attached to it. Let's get rid of the 8 first. To do that, we multiply both sides of the equation by 8. 8 times all of this equals 8 times all of this, which isn't very much. Now the distributive property of multiplication over addition says that if you multiply a number by a bunch of things you add up or subtract, then that's the same as multiplying it by each one individually. So I'm going to rewrite this as 8 times 9 sixteenths plus 8 times x over 4 plus 8 times, being careful here with my sign, negative 5y over 8. You've got to have that minus sign here, or if you don't want to put it there, you can put it there. That'll be the same thing, whatever you're most comfortable with. Here, 8 times 0 is 0. Now we're going to do a bit of cancelling. This one is the one that we did on purpose here. This, this 8 and this 8 are going to cancel. That's why we chose 8. Here, 8 and 4, that's one of those and two of those. And there are two 8s and a 16, so there's 1 and 2. So I'm left with, on this side, 9 halves plus 2x. The 8s are gone. I've got minus 5y equals 0. Okay, we're getting pretty close now. I want this y by itself. Let's get rid of these other things. I'm going to do it in one step. Minus, or sorry, 9 halves plus 2x minus 5y. And here I'm going to subtract 9 halves and subtract 2x, which is 0 minus 9 halves minus 2x. I've done the same thing to both sides of the equation, so it's still balanced. These things are going to cancel. That's the point. This and this, this and this are all canceling out. I'm left with negative 5y equals... Okay, well, how should I write this? I, I can write negative 9 halves minus 2x. Of course, I know that I want... I usually write my x's first, so I'm going to do that. Negative 2x minus 9 halves. All right, now the only thing left to do is to clear off this negative 5 to do that, because this is multiplication here, I've got negative 5 times y, I'm going to do the opposite operation and divide by negative 5, and I'll need to do that to both sides of my equation. Over here, the negative 5's will cancel, and I'm left with y. Over here, just like the distributive property for multiplication up here, the same thing has to happen for division. If I'm dividing these two things, by negative 5. I have to divide each of them by negative 5. So negative 2 over negative 5x, that's, sorry, negative 2 over negative 5 times x is 2 over 5x. The negatives will cancel. The negatives are going to cancel here as well. I'm going to end up, end up with a positive number. 9 over 2 divided by 5, that's 9 tenths. 9 divided by 2 and then the whole thing is divided by 5. That's like having 2 times 5 in the denominator, which gives you 9 tenths. And there, I'm, I'm finished. This is my slope, which is 2 fifths, positive 2 fifths. So that's an angle something like that. 2 up for every 5 over. And then here, this is my y-intercept, which is just a smidgen less than 1. So it's a, it's a positive number. It's above the x-axis, but it's not very high up. So those are three equations that you can uh, solve 
by putting into the y equals mx plus b form. And once you have that, then you've got some nice numbers to graph with. I hope that helps, and I'll see you soon.